All right, so for the final test, for today anyway, I'm gonna attempt to seal this hole closed. And we have filled that hole. What's going on, fellas? You were just looking at an additive manufacturing test that I have been messing around with the past couple of days. I've kind of redesigned this torch for the testing that's going to be done. And I'm just kind of jacking around with it to get a feel for what I might want to do on an actual torch design. Come to find out that water cooled is going to be essential. There's so much radiation flying off of the hot material that it just melts your gloves and everything so i also discovered that a minimum of 30 amps at 220 volts is required to provide enough hho to get this thing hot enough to melt the silica sand that we're using the silica sand is actually a composition of a bunch of junk that's why we see all those spots and speckles in the little test that i just did but I just wanted to show you guys how ferocious I have to get this torch. Right there is a transition point where we lose that inner cone. And we now have this hollow, crazy thing going on. It sounds very strange. I'll, you'll hear the sound of it here in a little bit. But that's what I've got going on. I'm going to be messing with some different powders eventually. I've decided that the sand that I'm using needs to be put through a ball mill and powdered down a little bit more, maybe to a thousand mesh or something like that. I think it would work a lot better. But nonetheless, I got some pretty good results with just this out of the bag Menard sand. That's 30 amps. It's probably gonna blow the hell up. I'm gonna give this another try today with this massive oxyhydrogen torch. We're gonna be using gas modification with propane. And this is another attempt at the additive manufacturing to make some high temp crucibles. Now, I'm just using these tests to feel out the design of an actual unit. And so far I've learned that the heat flying off of this process is going to require a water cooled unit. There's no way we're getting away with that. I'm gonna be detonating gas inside this tube before long. This, this process is gonna get screaming hot. So I have this torch on a swivel and I'm gonna run across this material and try and build a wall of sand. And again, I'm not trying to melt the sand as it's passing through the flame. I'm trying to melt the puddle of molten material at which point the sand particles will impact into that and stick. It will cause the buildup process to be a little bit better. The, then as the torch scans, it will melt previously clogged clumps of unmolten silica and that's the way I want to do this. I'm not trying to, by no means am I thinking I'm going to bring this sand to 3,000 degrees in a tenth of a second. All right, so we got really hot. I don't know how much longer that could have went on. Whew. I don't know if we can see this. Aha! It's making that aggregate that I was telling you I wanted to make. So the spray pattern's off, obviously. I think what's happening is the Vena Catracta is, uh, I didn't let it run long enough, but it was building up, guys.
It just needed to run longer, I think. I was letting a little bit too much sand out, maybe. I'm gonna try it again after it cools off. It's definitely gonna need to be water cooled. So there's a lot to experiment with here. Not only do I gotta experiment with sand flows, I gotta experiment with gas composition. I wish I had enough oxyhydrogen blasting out of this thing to run this torch, but believe it or not, I, I don't. I'd almost uh, probably have to hit 80 amps. This machine can do it, but the freaking wires in the wall can't handle that. So that's why I'm adding the propane. All right, this time we got a little, something a little bit more robust that isn't just gonna cave in on us. This is a very dense, castable refractory material. terrified I didn't even check how many liters per minute that was it's probably about 25 the torch is uh wow the fact that it didn't just melt my hand I can't see the results right now all I can see is a blinding white light see this lighting is terrible we definitely got a coating on there that we could have come back and just vitrified with the torch i'm gonna mess with it here in a bit i'll scrape it with a brush and see how hard it is to get that off there after it cools down yeah i've got a wire brush here and i'm gonna give this thing a, a good rub just to kind of observe the abrasion characteristics It is all vitrified material left. Alright fellas, I'm gonna give this a try again here. I'm gonna cover the entire top of this thing, kind of pretending like I'm putting some type of heat resistant shield on it. It definitely throws a lot of sand around, that ain't no big deal. I would imagine that this is gonna be part of the process. I wish I could get that sand to converge. It's actually spraying out at a right angle on one side for some reason. I'm going to have to look at the geometry of that uh, center line again under a microscope to make sure I'm properly aligned. But here I am running over it with a torch with no sand just to kind of vitrify that last layer. And boy is this stuff bright. Oh, well that did. Looks pretty crispy. So, we got a nice little frosty glass coating on there. Now, I could have went back over that again and vitrified this powdery layer a little bit more. But the question is, do you want to do that? If you turn it into a solid amorphous, you know, lump, it'll crack when exposed to heat and stuff like that. All right, I decided to fire the torch back up and vitrify that layer again one more time. Just to kind of seal the deal. I wanted to see how glassy I could get it with just a quick little taste. I didn't want to hold the torch on there too long and cause damage to the substrate that I'm heating up. All right, we definitely got a glass coating that time. I ran the torch over it a couple of times afterwards to kind of seal the deal, if you will. Oh man, she's beautiful. So, 
We're hitting the 3,000 degrees, no problem. Check that out. Okay, now I can actually pick this thing up so we can take a look at it. We definitely got us a layer on there. Now, of course, there's all different types of strategies. You could come back and hit this with a torch. It's got a really smooth, vitrified feel to it. Okay, so I just wire brushed this thing to death, you guys. That stuff is not coming off of there. That is a glass coating. Now, as far as protection, it, it's definitely a heat shield. I think I'll blast it with a blowtorch or something and see if it breaks off of there, but for the most part, it's doing okay. One thing about sand, though, when you heat it, it does boil, you guys, but it's not the type of boiling you think. It's just degassing. All right, so for the final test, for today anyway, I'm going to attempt to seal this hole closed. See if it's possible. Let's just say we were in some strange scenario where we would like to have this closed off with a glass plug. All right, fellas, I had two pairs of shades on at once there. Still blind. And we have filled that hole. Now, it could use a little post work, but uh, that hole has been filled with a 3,000 degree rated plug, guys. Those brown specks you see are some of the contamination pieces of sand and sawdust and all right looks like i've been sandblasting all my life the camera died but we sealed the hole i'm gonna take a look at this thing as soon as i can touch it check that out there's the backside plug it even has like some overlap, like it's riveted itself in there. So that would be a very good like furnace plug, you know what? That is just too cool, man. So the tip looks a little hot, a little scorchy. But I'm not seeing a bunch of sugaring or anything like that. So, so far, so good on the tip. So those are the two artifacts we've been able to do. Now, in order to accomplish that, though, we've needed to hit 25 to 30 amps on the HHO to get that hot. You can't do it on 20. It's just not enough. Oh. 